Well, I've been wanting to get this guest on for a, a fair amount of time after I saw some social media content throughout the year. <laughs> now, she goes by the name on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, AFL from LA. I know her only as Cindy, and she's been good enough to join me. Uh, Cindy, thanks so much for your time all the way from LA. That's right. So nice to finally meet you. You've been playing hard to get all season. Uh, <laughs> Straight away, you said, what took you so long to ask me to come <laughs> on? Um, which I had a laugh at. But uh, I don't know where to start here other than how yeah. the hell did you sco- discover Australian rules football? It's, it's actually quite a simple story. So my partner is Australian. So I, um, I was forced. <laughs> I was held at gunpoint and forced to watch Australian football. All right. So when did you, when did you two meet? Oh, uh, years ago. Um, but I will tell you that my first experience watching AFL was the Sydney Swans versus the West Coast Eagles in 2016, the grand final. That'll give you right. some indication of how long this has been going on. Yeah. And what, what was your first impressions of the game? Oh, it's fantastic. It's amazing. It's um. I like sports in general, so it's not a uh, stretch for me. I grew up watching American football, but it has it has like all of the elements that I think Americans like about football. But then you have like the added bonus of it doesn't stop. The fact that they don't wear any they you you didn't wear any uh, protection. You have the specs. You have I mean it, it's it's just more exciting. I think from start to finish. And how's the how's your content been received? Like it's certainly made an impact. I've had a number of people in it, sort of channel nine, have a look at it, and and really yeah. laugh along. Like you, you you know your stuff, and the thing that I've been impressed with, you know, sort of you hit the biggest storylines from from each week, and you do a pretty good job of of summarising that every week. But yeah, yeah, how's the content been received? <laughs> well, pretty good actually. I when we started the show it was sort of just to have a giggle for like our friends and family. And and in all honesty, we thought maybe Americans would be more interested than Australians, but as it's turned out, it's, it's the Aussies who are loving the content. And um, you guys have been very generous with me. I'd say I get a lot of great comments. I mean, you would know firsthand. I mean, sometimes you piss off some people when you say some (laughs) stuff that they don't want to hear. Right. (laughs) I wasn't but aware I, of that. I, yeah, but for the most part, it's been it's been wonderful. It's it's been a really um, positive experience for the last. It's been two years now, I think. So you've had a couple of people push back on on some of the things you've said, clearly. Oh, geez, yeah. I mean, uh, the show has changed a bit from when it first started out. I think we covered the games more. Um, the first season, and then it sort of moved into the area of the piss take in the second season, mm. because you know there's enough of you guys out there talking yeah. about the game and breaking it down, and you know all the stats and all that stuff. It became more fun just to write about the experiences that are going on, whether it's like the controversial calls, or the mm. on and off field behavior, all that kind of stuff. It just seem more interesting than just having another voice talking about, you know, who's going to be up for the Brownlow or whatever, you know? Yeah. So who's involved in, in creating the show and the content? So it's me and my partner. We do the show together. Um, we have a crazy schedule during the season because we're behind you guys, right? Yes. So we can't see some of the games. So like the Thursday night, the Thursday night games were like a godsend because it gives us kind of an extra day to get going. We have to watch the games and we have to write the material and then we have to find a location, go out and shoot, come back and edit and then get it out on your time so that it's like, hasn't already like passed its relevancy, you know? So um, where where exactly are you? You're you're in LA. Just give us a sort of indication of of your setup and uh, you you change locations for filming obviously, but yeah, just give us an insight into a bit of your life if you can. Yeah, uh, well, we're in Hollywood, you know, um, which we found would be, I mean, the whole idea of the show was that how funny is it that this American woman is so invested in football? And then on top of it, I live in Los Angeles, which is, you know, arguably the entertainment capital of the world. 
So it's, you know, one part travel show, let's call it, and one part footy show. Um, and yeah, we, we just kind of jump out of the house and roll up to a location, guerrilla style, and shoot on the street. We're chatting to LA, sorry, AFL from LA, Cindy. I, I don't even have a last name yet. I'll get that shortly and, and we'll credit <laughs> everything and how we can find you. But that's exactly how yeah. I, that's exactly what I thought, the way that you described it there is how is this yeah. lady who lives in LA, knows so much about the game, know the storylines and so passionate and invested by it. That's what, that's what uh, I was captured by. Uh, so you, yeah. you've done a pretty good job at that. Well, why? Why have we not hit the mark significantly in America, this sport, do you think? Um, I, there's probably a lot of reasons. One, it's not, it's, so not, it's not as accessible as other sports. I mean, you can watch, you know, Premier League soccer, football mm. all day long. Um, I, I recall years ago, you might have been able to catch a game on ESPN, like, in the middle of the night. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think the, the invention of the watch AFL app and other things like, I think people watch it on Roku and I just found out you can actually watch games on YouTube TV now too. Um, didn't realize that. So I think that's part of it. Um, you know, the time difference doesn't help. I mean, geez, mm. like during the week, during footy season, I might get to watch one or two games live, but for the most part, I have to go radio silence on, uh, you know, the internet and all the socials and not check my phone. Cause if I have friends in Sydney and I get a text from them, like I, I kind of have an idea of who won a game. So yeah. that's a challenge I think as well is that it's very hard to watch a live game, um, on our, on our coast mm. or even in anywhere in the United States, really. So we complain a lot about our game. We complain about umpires. We complain about tribunal oh, yeah. and, and those sort of things. And every club has a story. They're whinging about something. What, what's the <laughs> one thing that frustrates you about our game? Is there one thing in particular that you just go, oh, well, is what, why do they do it this thing? way? Come on now. Oh, it's okay. So, so here's the thing. So I started watching footy from a, a West Coast perspective. Okay. My Eagles are my primary team. I've been having like a sordid love affair with the Giants for the last couple of years. That's a whole other conversation. So it's, it's frowned upon in my household, but that's the truth. Um, but so I've watched the games from the West Coast perspective and I can see the bias is like very clear to me. Very right. clear. Interesting. Even, even like listening to the commentators calling the game they're actively cheering for certain teams. And as an American, I, it, it's like I was flabbergasted when I started noticing that this was happening because you'd be hard pressed to tell somebody in the United States who was calling a game who they were actually hoping would win. Yep. And there it's like, it's not a secret. It's like right. a lot of you guys lose interest. Like if, depending on who's playing, you completely like check out. Like I forget what game, but there was something going on. It might have been like an Adelaide game and they started talking about restaurants and bars <laughs> and just good. anything but the game. I feel like you need a new show just covering <laughs> our media that cover the game. I think you'd be pretty good at that, which brings me to the next point. Like yeah. I, well, I love coming to America because of the sport and I love the way yeah. that the sports are covered and I love the, the personalities that get involved and they're, they're ruthless, they're brutal, they're opinionists and they're the ones that make the biggest impact. How do you see us covering the game here versus the way that, the American media cover the NFL and basketball and the differences there. Are they, are they more brutal, do you think, from what you've seen and, and more honest? So I, I think in fairness, I spend more time watching Australian football yeah. than I do American sports. I, I've, I've reconnected to the NFL because as a, as an uh, after effect of the footy season ending, I, it's sort of, you're like jonesing for something. So the NFL kicks off when you guys end. So I found myself more invested now in American football than ever. But um, I don't think I could speak truly on, on that element of the game. Uh, yep. I mean, if I could tell you the amount of hours that is spent listening to like 
you on YouTube or uh, all the shows uh, on the couch or yeah. listen to Schofield and Backchat. It's like, <laughs> it's like You're all over it's it. Coming, it is coming at me from all angles <laughs> constantly, you know, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. whatever. So I am probably not the girl to ask about the difference right. between that element of the, um, the games. Where, where do you <laughs> hope your show gets to? Like, well, what, what's, your, what's your goals? Hey man, I heard there's like a big shakeup going on over there. I hear there's like some yeah. job openings. Yes. Carolyn Wilson's Ch leaving. Exactly uh, right. Chill and I'm looking for some people. <laughs> you know, I mean, oh wait, actually, oh, Carrie Stokes is calling. Can you hold on a second? <laughs> you, you don't I miss. don't know. You know, you and I, this is, you know, we could get together once a week. I'm open. I'm, okay. I'm flexible. Whatever right. you want. I'm Sounds yours. Good. I'm actually coming over. Um, we, we've got an Airbnb in the Hollywood Hills actually for three weeks oh, at the end no of way. November, early December. So we should catch up and I I don't know, have, have a chat and grab a coffee and uh, meet your partner and we can we can chat all things AFL. But look, it's it's Love it's it. been great to discover you honestly you've, you've brought a lot of laughs and joy to a lot of people over here as live so just just for those that aren't aware and, and haven't heard of you where can they find your content well anything that says afl at la on twitter on youtube instagram TikTok, facebook yep. you name it it's there it's there all right well thank you so much for your time i appreciate it cindy Very, it's my pleasure hope to see you again soon Stay in touch. Appreciate it. Okay. So there it is, AFL from LA. Uh, check it out on all the socials on YouTube. It's a, it, I mean, it's amazing the the impact that the game can have, far reaching across the other side of the world where this sport is being spoken about, in the Hollywood Hills.